Now that we've looked at the, the arithmetic mean, which is a very important measure of central tendency, it's not the only important measure of central tendency, however. There is another one that we're going to be interested in called the median. Now the median is the number that separates the lower half of a data set from the upper half of a data set when that data set is arranged in ascending order. Right? So if you're going to find it by hand, you'd have to put your data in order from lowest to highest. Now, luckily for you, you don't really have to do this because computers and calculators and Excel can all do this for you. So your calculator finds the median when it does the one variable statistics, just like when it found the mean. Um, and keep in mind that the median is resistant to extremely large or small values relative to the other data. Those are called outliers. We'll talk more about them later. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is find the median for the data set from example two. So if you remember, we have this list of the number of pets that people have in the class. So to find the median, you would go to, oops, I already have it up there, stat, and either one or enter either way because it's already highlighted. You'd enter all your data in, but we actually have all the data in here already because we haven't done anything since then. So that's lovely. It's right there. And then I'm going to press stat calculate number one, which is one variable stats. My data is in L1, so L1, or R in L1, I should say. Data is a plural word. The frequency list we're just going to leave blank for right now. That's going to come back to haunt us a little bit in section 3.3, but for now we're leaving it blank because we have one single column of data. And we're going to move down to calculate and press enter. Now the mean is right up here, 2.3125, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff that we'll use through the rest of chapter 3. But close to the bottom, MED, that's 2, that's the median. So the calculator finds it for you. All right, so let's scroll down here and put that value in. Oops, sorry. I already made this video once and my computer ate it, so I'm doing it again. All right, so MED, which is kind of a capital italicized M. It, um, some people write MED, some people will just write out the word median, it's two. All right, we're done with that. So now let's think about resistancy a little bit more. So we have a little exploratory example here. So we have the annual incomes of 10 random people in a Seattle bar are listed below. So there we are. So we have Tom, Larry, Susan, and so on. And here are their incomes, and there's the unit, thousands of dollars, right? So this Tom makes $32,000 and so on. So the first question is, what type of variable is annual income? Is it qualitative or is it quantitative? And I gave you a little hint right here, but actually that hint is not really relevant. Um, so I don't know why I really have it, because it doesn't really matter that it's rounded with no decimal places. All I'm asking about is that it's quantitative. The no decimal places thing is getting at a little bit of, is it discrete or continuous? And the answer is it's discrete, because even if it wasn't rounded, um, it doesn't go on forever with decimal places. I will delete that. So it's quantitative. This is numerical, and it's numbers that you can actually perform meaningful calculations on. Otherwise, accountants wouldn't have a job. All right, now what type of le oh, excuse me, what level of measurement is this? Well, nominal is out because nominal is categories that have no numerical calculation possible. Ordinal is pretty much the same thing. They can be numeric, but only for things like, you know, gold star, silver, you know, five star, four star, three star, that kind of thing. So that's no. So those are just out. That leaves these two, interval and ratio. Now interval is the t level of measurement that can have negatives, if you recall, and ratio is the one that cannot have negatives. Now this is your income. Income cannot be negative. Now you can have a negative net worth, negative profit, for example, but you cannot have a negative income. The lowest amount you can have coming in is zero. And then, of course, if you have a lot of expenses, that would make it so that your net worth is negative, but your income itself is positive or zero. So that means ratio, because ratio is the one where it cannot be negative. Now we are going to find the following with our calculator. We're going to find the mean and the median. So let me go back to this. I'm going to press Stat, Edit. And just for fun, I'm actually going to put the data here in L2 for the fun of it. I feel like it. I want to show you guys something different. So I'm going to type 32, 36, 39, 41. If you wanted to, you could go up to the top and clear out the old column. That's the other way to do it. So you press up with your up arrow and then clear, enter, and then clear out all of L1. 
but I'm just going to leave it in L2 for the heck of it. So now I'm going to press stat. I'm going to write to calculate, pick number one, one variable stat. But instead of list L1, that's the pet data still. I want to tell it L2, which is above the two button. See how that? For me, it's in blue. So second two, that's where my data is, R. And then frequency list, nothing. And then calculate, enter. And there are all the numbers. I have to scroll down a bit. And there's the median, which is 45. So the median is 45, and the mean was 47.222. All right, so let me type those up one second. There we go. So we have 47.222 thousand, and then we have 45,000. And technically, it's thousand dollars and of course, an English instructor would have a stroke because technically the dollar sign is supposed to come before the number. But either way, either put the dollar sign in front of 47 or at the very end. One way or another, you have to delineate what your monetary unit is here. All right, now, Bill Gates, um, the CEO of, actually, what is he now? Co-founder of Microsoft. Um, he walks into the bar because Microsoft is based in Seattle. I don't know if you knew that. And he walks in and his annual income is $3,710,000,000. Yeah, it's a lot. Yes. Okay, so we're going to find the mean and the median with him in the room. But notice, all of these were in $1,000 in the first place, right? So the first thing we have to do is convert his salary, which has the ones, tens, and hundreds place, get rid of those three decimal places and make it start at the thousands place because that's our unit is thousand dollars. So the first thing we do is move the decimal from over here to the right of that last zero. You're going to move it over here after the thousands place. So that becomes that. And then we're going to go enter that value into the calculator. So I'm going to go to stat edit. I'm going to move, actually, I'm going to be tricky. I'm going to go up, up, and it kicks you to the very bottom of the list, right? Crafty, huh? Some of the older calculators don't do that as well, so see if you can figure out if your calculator does it. And I'm going to type this number, 3710000. Now, oops. You'll notice that the calculator doesn't really write what you just typed. It writes 3.71E6. What that really is, though, is scientific notation. It means what we just typed. It's just that the decimal point is six spots over to the right from between the three and the seven, because the calculator can only handle enough space for about five digits, and after that, it's going to have to write scientific notation. So that's okay. We have scientific notation. That's good. And now I'm going to press stat, calculate, one variable stats, L2 is fine because that's still where my data are, and go down to calculate, and there's the mean right there, 371,042, so 371,042.5 thousand dollars, think about that for a second, it's huge, and the median is only 47.5, which isn't much of a change at all. All right, so let me type those in. One second. All right, now check it out. The median went from 45,000 to 47.5 thousand. Not much change at all. The mean, on the other hand, went from a whopping 47,000, respectable, to 371,000 thousand, right? Because this is 371. 42.5 thousand, right? So 371,042.5 thousand dollars. In other words, this is, if we move the decimal spot over, so let's figure this out. This is 371, if you move the decimal spot, three spots over, it's that many dollars. That's 371 million dollars. It's huge, right? super, super huge, which is exactly what we want to get at when we talk about resistancy, right? So the median didn't get affected much, but the mean did. So I wrote it down here. Bill Gates had a huge effect on the mean. He increased it from 47,000 to $371 million, right? 
these poor people in that, in that room, there's no way they're ever going to see a penny of $371 million, right? But he's pulling the mean super high because his annual income is so high, right? Whereas the median, it did not have a huge effect on it. Right? The median only increased a little bit from 45,000 to 47.5 thousand. What you're kind of doing in there is originally Marcus was the median. See, there's four people below Marcus and there's four people above Marcus. Marcus is right there at the median. When Bill Gates walks in the room, that gives him another spot down here, right? So the median moves from being Marcus to being the halfway spot between Marcus and Randy. So you add up 45 and 50 and divide by two and you're gonna get 47.5. So it's kind of that middle spot in between, right? That's what you're doing. Hold on, I wanna make that smaller. All right, so that leads us to important points to notice about the median. Number one, the arithmetic mean is very sensitive to extreme, i.e. very small or very large data values. So the median is resistant to those values. So example would be Bill Gates. He caused a huge increase in the mean that was absurd, but the median didn't increase much at all. All right, then when data are skewed, the median is preferred. Because the median is resistant, you would never want to use the mean when it when you have a badly skewed data set you want to use the median because it resists that skewing so for example here i have the members of congress and their incomes so most members of congress are actually quite wealthy so they have large incomes there are a few who do not have huge incomes right they're on the low end so that means that the mean average income for members of congress is lower but it's not fair to use it because those few people that don't make a lot of money are pulling the mean down towards them, whereas the median resists that pull, right? It's fairer to use the median income rather than the mean. And if you ever listen to business reports or, you know, watch us, uh, what is it? Um, the Financial um, Times, Wall Street Journal, et cetera, they'll talk about median income and median housing prices. And this is exactly why, because housing tends to go like this. And so does income. They both tend to be very right skewed. Most people have houses in a certain range and a few people have mansions. So it's not fair to talk about a mean housing price. It's fair to talk about a median housing price, similarly with income. So that leads to this little picture down here. If the data set is skewed left or negative, negatively skewed the other name for that we learned in chapter two, that means that the mean is less than the median and therefore you should use the median. The median's the better measure. If it's positively skewed, again, you should use the median, right? That means that the mean is greater than the median and that's no good to you. If they're roughly symmetric, roughly, then you should use the mean. Now, of course, the middle one is the one we're going to end up using from chapter seven onward. Um, this is obviously extremely important to us, but it's important at this stage to know that these other two cases can exist. And if they do, you're on the hook to use the median and not the mean in your reporting on the data. Also keep in mind that this tends to work better for continuous data. This doesn't really work well for discrete data. Remember the difference between discrete and continuous from section 1.1, that's important to us. Discrete stuff will be in chapter six and continuous stuff will be in chapter seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, right? So they don't quite work the same. But in general, if it's skewed left, use the median. If it's skewed right, use the median. If it's roughly symmetric, they'll be basically the same, then you're off, better off using the mean. And I'm going to go back here and type up that thing I said about Marcus right here. One second. There we go. The median back here moved from Marcus to the halfway point between Marcus and Randy. Right there. And that's what I wrote right there. All right, we're done with that. And I'll be back to talk more about the difference between the mean and the median and how that affects skewing, as well as the mode. I'll see you back here then.